So it looks like this Joey Schwartz, I think is his name, uh, decided not to do Carnivore anymore. He's the one that did an interview with Durian Rider that I, you know, did a reaction to. So let's see what he's got to say. Yo, I have made what I eat in the days, which clearly includes plants. Uh -oh. But I haven't Isn't that given a full thorough breakdown on YouTube as to why I quit, exactly what my thought process was, how I was doing throughout that entire period. And just general things like that that I feel like have been glossed over, and I there goes the GoPro. On, especially as carnivore gets more popular, and um, as I just see it more and more on the internet. But so let's go back. Let's go back to where it all started, right? Back to the it future. It all started back with my senior year of high school, where oh, I wasn't shit. feeling too good. I was tired a lot. I was getting those afternoon crashes, and I was like, okay, you know what? I need to find something different. Mm. And so I ended up finding carnivore. I did carnivore for like two years. And this is when in the beginning sounds like Genesis. In the beginning, uh when I when I did keto, it was really like you really did get a lot of energy off it in the beginning. When I was what, seventeen? Maybe se seventeen sixteen or seventeen? Seventeen. And I was still growing, developing, getting stronger, bigger, taller. And what I thought was the carnivore diet enhancing every single aspect of my life is like, especially when in athletic performance, I was getting really good at soccer, but I was also playing every single day. So it kind of makes sense why I was getting better regardless. But anyway, I don't know how you get better at sports without carbohydrates. I mean, if you look at what is Carl Lewis that worked with uh, McDougal, I mean, he started setting records after he started adding those potatoes in the diet. I thought that the carnivore was his miracle drug and if there's one thing I've learned, it's that the power of the mind shouldn't ever be doubted. You can convince yourself of anything, any diet. This is why some vegans can actually survive, right? Nobody survives on a vegan diet if they think it's bad for them. That would be the number one thing that would fuck them up. But I thought carnivore was the answer for everything. And so I attributed every single- Now, obviously a vegan diet, it clearly is not necessary, but it does, like, like I said to somebody the other day, like they said, well, we're omnivores. I mean, technically, yeah, you can survive on just about anything that's edible. But it's like, you also can live in a tent, but I would rather live in a house. You know, like, it's kind of the same comparison. Now, if you're doing vegan with the three, three calories a day, uh, you know, obviously that's not going to work for anybody. A good thing in my life to carnivore and it got a little bit out of control when I started to realize that I actually wasn't as healthy as I thought I wasn't as strong as I thought and I was actually kind of suffering I didn't talk about this publicly but I got I did some blood tests and like there were definitely results in there that weren't very good and since then they've gotten insanely good like insane like top top percentages but it was fucked at one point and I didn't talk about this, and I probably, I don't know, I, maybe I'll go into it more. Like Nobody the does. Data. This, is the pro this is the problem with the squeaking voice. This is the problem, whether it's carnivore, whether it's keto, whether it's vegan, whether it's raw vegan, whether it's uh, seafood and eat it. Nobody is going to talk about the downsides of things because they're selling you something. And that is the problem, even with me, like... There has been some downsides with the vegan thing, and I've talked about them in the past because I'm not really, you know, selling anything, but this is the issue that you run to. And, you know, I noticed he's got, like, lost, like, 7,000 subscribers or something like that on his channel. At some point, but for now, I'm just going to... You guys are just going to have to take my word for it because I'm not... I've been super transparent my whole time online. I'm not here to lie to anyone or just convince anyone that something is wrong that's right or something that's right that's wrong i'm just trying to be honest and tell my 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 own story and so carnivore was was fucking me up basically like in short like that's the truth it was really messing me up and in retrospect it kind of makes sense why um my family was not a low carb family by any means like our ancestry is not low like none of nothing about me should be low carb uh, at all right my grandparents it's lots of bread it's lots of potatoes obviously organic you know like high quality stuff, fruits, and my family all has sweet tooths. It, like it didn't, it didn't make sense looking back for me to thrive on a low carb diet. But I was doing carnivore, not because of what my recent ancestors did, but because I thought that way, way, way back in time, you know, like 
Homo sapiens, like after Australopithecus was eating fruit, grabbing from the trees, that okay, we were carnivores, right? Like we're, we've been carnivores for a million years. Why on earth would I eat plants that haven't been around until the agricultural revolution, which was just a tiny fraction of? Yeah, but the meat. I mean, if we're just gonna d d summarize animals as meat, the meat isn't like it used to be either. I mean, if you if you look at other countries that aren't force feeding their cows. Their cows are like a half the size of cows in America, like half the size, if not like smaller. There's a lot more fat or like that Wagyu from out of Japan. Why that sells for so much is they over fatten the animals. And that's why sell and the tomahawks and everything that that comes out of this that, that, that sells so much it's for so much is because they uh, you know the diet makes them even fatter than they originally you know w should be so th th don't fool any anybody who's watching this don't fool yourself into thinking that you're eating something that our ancestors ate i don't think it looks anything near it i, I mean the closest that you're probably going to get is actual yams like what we eat is sweet potatoes but if you ever see a yam it looks like a root and it's usually got wax on it those are probably the closest, you know, to the originals. Of our existence on Earth. This is my thinking. It doesn't matter what my great grandmother ate. Yeah, she ate potatoes and meats and soups and lived till 104, but that that didn't make sense. You could live the one. When my great grandmother lived to 96, had no health issues her entire life. She's like, why the hell am I on this planet so long? And I mean, the old, the thing that I remember about her was. This huge bowl of those Smarties or whatever they're called, the the candies, the, you know, the, the little in the the little wafer looking things. I mean, I, you know, they, they ate just they didn't pay attention to this stuff. Thirty, if you eat carnivore, like like you, people used to do in the olden days, right? Like way back before agricultural revolution. But now th that I know what I know, that's a fairy tale. That whole story of evolving, becoming from monkeys, this and that and the other. That's a fairy tale that is not true at all, whatsoever. None of that's true. We didn't evolve like that. That is an atheistic belief that is there to take people away from God and religion, from to take, take people away from any sort of divine force. If you believe that we came from monkeys, you need to seriously reevaluate your own perspective and understanding of life in the world, because that is a terrible way to think, and it's so wrong. So now that I understand what I know, you know, if I could go back in time, I would have never done carnivore. I would have never been carnivore because I know that that's not how humans developed. We the interview that I did, the original interview that I did with Magda, she said the same thing. She feels like she lost like eight years of her life. Like most of the people who were in this and are like, well, they're, everybody's, uh, everybody's different. No, not really. You know, and then the thing is, is everybody wants to look into the studies. The studies are on humans. If you're a human, then it applies, right? So when they see uh, things that they don't like in studies or whatever, they're like, well, everybody should eat different. But if they see something they like in a study, mostly funded by whoever's profiting from the study, then everybody should eat that way. It, you know, it's like ass backwards. We weren't eating raw meat and then we started cooking our meat because because we got smarter and our brains got bigger. And that's all that's all bullshit. That's not a real story. And humans are the chosen ones. We are not like any other animal on Earth. We are not insignificant. We are, the, the earth is for humans. We are everything. We are, the, we are life and everything is just there for us. Everything is here for us. We are, like, and, but when you're carnivore and you're following this whole belief system, you think everything is random. You think it's just like, okay, this is how things turned out. We were fish and then we became monkeys and then we became whatever the next thing is and humans and apes and sh like, that's the thinking. So you think it's, everything is just, Let's just go back in time and use the history books. But that's not how we can actually do things. That doesn't work. I mean, if we're going to, if we want to use the history books, I mean, if even like go back to Tepe, which is in Turkey, which is like the oldest dig site that I, that I know of, it's like 25,000 years old. They found mostly starch remnants. And of course there's going to be animals in that stuff, right? There, of course there is because people were using animal skins and everything else for what they were doing but they weren't mass slaughtering animals they didn't have an assembly line with a huge knife on it slitting their throats they didn't have some guy with this huge knife decapitating 
cows. I mean, they didn't have this artificial insemination of cows. They didn't have all of this. It's just whatever they could find. And that is, in my mind, if you're going to eat animals, is better. At least this animal had its life, man. It's not sitting in a, a tent somewhere in its own turds waiting to have its head cut off. And then you eat it. Like, you know, I, I don't know. That's not true at all. That's that's complete denial of the truth and, and uh, the actual existence of God. So I understand this now, but I didn't understand this then. And at this time, I was really starting to to struggle on carnivore. And so I added back in carbs. <gasps> now, there was a lot of... I had been doing research on carnivore for years, guys. If you think about this... I mean, I was making six, seven K a month on my channel. Like it was my main source of income. I was trying to leave UCLA. Of course I wanted it to be real. Of course I wouldn't have left carnivore if I didn't think that I needed to, but I did need to. And, but I was researching a shit ton in that whole time. Like it was all that I focused on. It was all that I was doing. Watching videos, watching the carnivore channels, reading books, reading research papers. And I accumulated a, a lot of knowledge in defense of the idea that carnivore is the best diet for humans. I got a lot of knowledge. And some of those things include the ideas that all animals are in ketosis, they all produce ketones. Um, things like there are very... There's a lot of herbivores out there. How would they be in ketosis? Very other, there are groups who thrive on only animal products. I mean, I've never seen a dog like, oh, no, I'm not going to eat that potato that you put in my bowl. I, you know, give me some meat. I, I mean, it's ridiculous. And it's just a lot more stuff, like carbohydrates being poisonous, plants having anti-nutrients, um, just a lot of stuff that I can... That I now, I will say this. I'm not one of these huge proponents of kale or a lot of other greens or spinach, really, for that matter. I'm not really... Like, it would take 20 pounds a day of uh, greens to, to meet 2,000 calories. That's ridiculous. We're not meant to eat that way at all. I know, you know, you, you can use greens as your medicine, but I mean, I, you know, I'm not into that whole life. I can recite like it's nothing because I studied it so hard. I studied it more than anything else in my entire life. And now I understand that there's a huge, very strong and true rebuttal to all these points because carnivore is not an inherently bad diet. But it's a bad diet for certain people in certain situations. No, it's a bad diet, dude. I mean, you see, he, here's the thing. He needs to have some kind of validation for what he did. Like, you know, like I, you know, like I did keto for keto, sometimes carnivore for like 10 years. You know why I say sometimes carnivore? I, I did get to a point where like I was so addicted to meat that I couldn't even get myself to eat anything else. I remember, like I said in the beginning of my channel, like if you guys watch my channel in the in the beginning, I calculated that I was eating like 40 pounds of, of like animal a week. Now that was still when I was lifting. I was lifting, uh, you know, that was heavy lifting. But I think I was eating so much because my body's like, dude, we need something else, but you're not giving it to us. And I just kept eating meat. And I remember standing out there at the grill, because even in the winter, snowing outside, blizzard outside, I'm out here at the grill, because that's the way tastes best to me. With, and I had one of the big Weber's that's for an entire family, and I'm making lunch. You know, like, it's, it, it's, it, it, it's addicting. Situations. For example, if you are a developing child in the heart of Los Angeles with Eastern European ancestry, you should not be a carnivore, point blank. You should not, no no chance, because your ancestry is acclimated to consuming grains, to consuming starches and organic local fruits, as well as meat, high quality raw dairy, without it, which has tons of carbs. There's so many carbs in raw milk, right? This is all stuff that should be consumed by somebody in that situation, whereas somebody in Siberia, it's a different story. If you're in Siberia, then you only have meat at certain months of the year, that's totally fine. You need the extra fat, you need meat for warmth. You don't really need carbs, because they're not there. I mean, you need milk, which has tons of carbs in itself, but you're not gonna eat starches and plants and stuff. I need carbs. I definitely need I just don't buy into it. Even if you look in the dead middle of Africa, these people are eating corn. I don't know where he said, I, I completely spaced out, sorry. But I don't know what country he, he mentioned there, but like, 
if you um if you look at any country if you look at south america i mean i don't know if antarctica is going to count i don't know what they eat would, would eat there you know like i don't know but most countries revolve around potatoes and corn and then obviously the asian countries revolve around rice and then the middle east largely known as the wheat bowl revolves around grains I need them. I cannot be on a zero car. And e even even if you look at the Native Americans, if you want to use America, they revolved around agri agriculture, which was squash and corn. Right, because it fucked everything up for me. It fucked shit up. I'm just gonna leave it at that. But back to these things that I was studying, right? All animals are in ketosis. Well, we are not like all animals, and there's a reason why there are no natural groups at all that are in ketosis maybe animals sure maybe monkeys and um cows cows will take grass ferment it no monkeys do what no yeah and then they'll produce ketones that's great have you ever seen the video if you're on like tiktok not tiktok i'm not i've never been uh, i'm not really on there um twitter or x or whatever they call it now there's this video it might even be on instagram i don't know there's this video of people putting like these 40 pound boxes of bananas down in front of uh, monkeys. These dudes annihilate this, clear this box out so fast. There's like a group of 20 monkeys and they clear this ba uh, bananas out like, like almost instantly. Great, but not humans. Because humans, all the natural groups, Hansa, Nicoya, um, any centenarian group, any people, the people in the Mediterra Mediterranean, uh, these groups throughout Italy who live a super long time. These are not low carb groups at all. None of them. Mm -mm. The only ones who had some success with low carbs were the Inuit. And crazy thing is, Inuit can't even get into ketosis. That's the crazy thing. So everyone points to the Inuit as this group that shows the power of the carnivore diet when the Inuit cannot even get into ketosis. This was almost certainly... 40% of their diet comes from carbohydrates. Like, like they're honey freaks. So that's not even true. An adaptation they made in order to offset the negative effects of a zero carb diet. They can't get into ketosis, so they make their own sugars because it's a clear sign that long-term ketosis, prolonged ketosis, would lead to the ultimate um, termination of, of their civilization. They wouldn't be able to procreate anymore. It's basically an anti-fertility diet in many cases. In the, the Inuit are a testament to this. Why would it be? I mean, this he's telling us 100%. This is why they're pushing the diet. This is why they're pushing the experiment. This is why they're pushing everything else. They know that the testosterone plummets. I mean, I doubled my testosterone in one month through blood tests. And the video is still up. Adding a pound of sugar a day. A pound of sugar a day. What I want people to, to actually explain to me if I'm wrong here, why would it be that carnivore is the optimal diet for everyone if there is an adaptation in the Inuit that selects against the continuation of being able to get into ketosis? Why would that be the case? Why is it that the, that the Maasai consume raw milk? They consume tons of carbs through raw milk and blood. Probably more carbs than the average American does. And we, do we really why, want to follow somebody who's that? living on blood? Why would the Hunza, who are known to live into their 160s, consume breads and consume grains and apricots as well as tons of raw dairy products they have a high carb diet a lot of these groups have high carb diets and nicoya a high carb diet why would this be the case i mean if you look at the, 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 milk, the breakdown of milk it is primarily carbohydrate no matter what the species and still i maintain that when i pass a cow i'm like not like man that's a nice titty i want to go suck on it like who thought of this like how desperate were they it's a survival diet. You can survive on it. Great. This is not to point to make fun of the carnivore because I did it for two years. I'm not trying to be a dick or anything, but I'm, I'm not making fun of it. I, I mean, I, really I did it myself. This conversation and pro it's kind of start this but back up again because it doesn't make sense to me. Like somebody make it make sense. None of these groups are doing uh, low carb. None of them. So if carbs are so poisonous, if they're so toxic, why are these groups still thriving in spite of consuming high carb diets? I don't, I don't understand. Right? If humans are supposed to be so good on, on even the Japanese, meat, even the Japanese for the like most shit? part, why, why did it fuck? Bruh. Even the Japanese for the most part, 
still consume like crazy amounts of white rice for the most part. I know the Chinese think that they are Westerners now because they eat, you know, like 30 different kinds of meat a day, but the Japanese still are true to the game. Me up at the end. <laughs> Right, and now guys, I, f I feel better than I've ever felt before. I look better, like everything is good in my life right now. And yeah, I started to get outside more. I left a stressful environment, which was UCLA. I made a lot of good changes to my life. I started, uh, and, I, and one of those big changes that I made was I started to eat more plant foods, more carbs, you know? I, I, that's really what I started to do. And I felt my energy go up a lot. I felt like hormonally I was way better off, libido better, stronger, like everything better. And I don't think that you can say that it's because I did it incorrectly when I was literally one of the pioneers in carnivore. Nobody was doing carnivore better than me to be like, and I'm no bullshit. Like I was doing it perfect. I would, I tried the fasting thing. I tried eating a shit ton, like bowls and bowls of, of grass finished tallow. I was eating some oh. organs oh. rarely, right? Like in moderation. Oh, I never got that extreme. When I craved it, only when I craved it, I would eat organs. I would eat some cooked, sometimes raw, like and all of the highest quality stuff with with cuts around the bones for to get the optimal collagen ratio. Like I was doing it right, guys, and, and it still fucked me up because it's, here's the my thing. Body here's the so thing. There's no right version of this diet because the diet is fake. Like, how can you do the optimal thing of something that doesn't e exist other than marketing? It's a marketing. It's marketing. So how do you like get to the optimal level of something? That is paid for in it's a profit it, it, it's there's no such thing that does not exist stressed out trying to make carbohydrates out of proteins which is a stressful now i'm not saying vegan is much but there's no studies in vegan it doesn't make anybody any money it makes like a few influencers some money right there's what uh, how much money is coming from a carrot like like go juice carrots like the gerson therapy right he, he told people to go juice carrots how much money is actually coming from that unless he's juicing it for you and charging him ten dollars you know an ounce the process gluconeogenesis is a stress provoking process that i didn't need to put myself through and i'm so glad i did carnivore still i'm so glad i did it because if I didn't, if I hadn't done it, I would never have gone to the point where I'm at now where I feel like I'm way closer to the truth. The only thing that's going to bring us closer to the, to the truth is making mistakes. It's Jesus. But at the same time, I think it's, it's a, a little bit of a frightening message that carnivore is a solution to everything. And guys, you guys all know this. I did so many carnivore interviews. I did so many of them. So many incredible success stories. People who did, who were sick, who had um, like epilepsy, like everything you could imagine. Here's the thing. I agree with that because it's an elimination diet. You're eliminating the, <laughs> my usual go-to is Taco Bell and Doritos. You're eliminating that. If you're not having all that Doritos and, and Taco Bell and you're only having, you know, grass-fed animals, that is an elimination diet. Your body is going to be able to fi finally start getting rid of stuff that's in your system. That doesn't mean that it's a heal-all. It just means that you stopped eating the other stuff. Like everything. I interviewed them and I was, a, I did great interviews too. There were great interviews, great success stories. And so I'm not oblivious to the, uh, the, to the potential for the carnivore diet to be extremely therapeutic. I'm not, I understand that, but I also understand. It's going to be therapeutic to a point, which is what I went through with keto. It was therapeutic to a point. And when it's not that way anymore, it is going to start going the other way. And then people are going to say, well, I'm 30 now, and I used to be 25 when I started this, so it must just be an age thing, and it's not. <clears throat> and now that depriving yourself of carbohydrates is not the solution in most cases, but depriving yourself of carbohydrates that are sprayed with pesticide, of carbohydrates that are refined, of carbohydrates that are infused with red 40 and dyes and artificial sweeteners and things like that, that makes more sense to me. Yeah, I stay away from the dyes as much as possible. This, this is why other countries, man, who ban that stuff, in some aspects, are better off than, than we are. I think the reason why the carnivore diet is so, so effective for so many people 
is not because of the fact that they're eating more meat or that they're eating less carbs, but they're eating less toxins. I mean, meat is incredibly nutritious. It is a it is the most important part of the human diet by far, no doubt about it. I don't believe that. However, when you take out carbohydrates, you are not seeing a benefit because you don't have sugar anymore. You're seeing a benefit because you took off a bunch of garbage. Now, between the three macronutrients, we have fats, proteins, and carbs. The industrialization of food, okay? In other words, food becoming more centralized, less small farms, more large agriculture, more glyphosate, things of that nature. The industrialization of food was most problematic for carbs. Why is that? Well, let's take an animal, let's take a cow. You feed a cow pesticide sprayed grains, it's gonna be able to get rid of some of that. It's not all going to assimilate its tissues. I some of know. it, yes, you're gonna get some pesticide. I, I don't know if I buy into that because the, the glyphosates is going to go into the grains that they're feeding them. It's going to go into the soybean that they're feeding and it. it's going to go into the greens that it's feed, being fed. It's going to concentrate, especially in the organs. It's going to have a fatty liver. A lot of cows nowadays are actually dying early because of fatty liver. So And then you get these carnivores who are going to be eating the organs you know the organs are healthy for you so they're going to be eating the organs now thinking that they're doing something good for themselves in reality i worked in this industry i worked in this indus the industry from 94 to 2001 in the cutting as in the fish industry in the cutting of everything right the processing of the animals they, they came in whole they left in fillets the thing is, is a lot of the time we would cut off, we would cut off the tumors and stuff like that, and they would be turned into patties and, you know, like fish patties or, uh, you know, they would be turned into fake crab meat and they would be turned into crab cakes and, and vice versa in this, when you go into the meat industry, these cancers that are in these animals are being turned into McDonald's, you know, whatever they're being turned into the patties, they're being turned into whatever is in these nuggets these days. They're being turned into hot dogs, brats, pola sausage, you know, like Ditka, you know, all this kind of stuff, right? So this is where that stuff is going because they're not going to waste it. They're not going to throw these tumors and cancers away. They're going to make money off of it somewhere. So how, where did they hide it? They hide it in somewhere with a nice casing uh, for you to grill uh, to watch your baseball game. But cows also <clears throat> are ruminants. They have four stomachs. They can filter a lot of that shit out. I don't Humans, buy it, not so much. So when you have your carbs... I mean, they're going to filter some out, obviously. We all do. But it's going to also concentrate, especially in the organs. And once the organs are shot, it's going to start concentrating in the muscles. And that's what you're going to be eating fats or proteins the fats and proteins obviously being prevalent in the animal foods well what do we have going on here we have fats and proteins that are then filtering out a bunch of pesticide much better than humans are We're the point of keto and the point of a lot of these other things and he just said he ate grass-fed tallow whatever the fuck that means like do they take the fat off the animal and you know feed it grass but like that is, he just said it's going to concentrate there. So you're eating that. You're eating that. And you know, the, the thing is, is, when I was growing up, that is what people used to fry things in. And the people were a whole lot healthier than they are nowadays. Whereas with carbohydrates, we're going direct to the source of toxins. <laughs> the animals that came as a product of industrialization. Have That's why you do toxins, organic. But he, I mean, he's right more. there. But it's, it's fresh. Here's the thing. You're going to get concentrated levels of it. Think about how much more a cow is going to eat than you can. This animal weighs two, like, I don't know what they, 2,000 pounds, that sounds like too much. Maybe 1,000, I don't know, whatever, 800 pounds. It's a lot of stuff. It's going to be eating. It's going to be concentrating a lot more, especially, these animals aren't exactly running around in the prairie, uh, you know, like, willy-nilly, like everybody thinks they are. They're stuck in these, bu these buildings, and they're not moving. Their lymphatic's not going to move. Honeys, starches, grains, all these things are super high poison when grown industrially.
that's the that's the problem guys it's the fact that we have all of these plant foods that are grown in such a toxic manner and so now all of a sudden when you remove them you're way healthier because your body isn't being given toxins anymore sure it's a little bit more stressed out it has to now produce sugar from nothing from proteins however it's a lot better off that is true but that is a very costly process and it leaves a lot of toxic residue which you don't start noticing until you start noticing it to not to be a little bit more stressed out a little bit higher cortisol maybe with less toxins than it is to have more toxins and, and have that little lower stress response mm. from i don't buy the, into this i think what's happening is the fact that most people I mean, I, I don't do it as much as I used to. Like, I used to do DoorDash a lot. I don't do it as much as I used to, largely because I hate it. But when I would go shopping, and you see a lot of the keto stuff nowadays. You see a lot of this keto thing. I can't tell you how many times I'm down the chip aisle because people can't figure out the chips are high carbs, high fat. And then they want their diet pepsi or whatever and you know the chemical in the diet is actually turns into formaldehyde in the body like you know so when you stop cutting or when you start cutting that stuff out that is when the the miracles are starting to happen it has nothing to do the thing is is the body heals itself and i know a lot of people fight me about this but tell me why animals and humans when they're really sick they fast and they heal faster when they're not eating the body heals itself. It doesn't need anything outside of it. That's the one thing I do not agree with this medical medium about this. He's always posting how like papaya is healing, blah, 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 or potatoes are doing this for you. Bullshit. The body heals itself. The less that you have coming into it, like, you, you know, like fruit processes so fast. You eat, you pretty much got to be at the house or wherever you're at when you eat the fruit because it's coming out half hour. And, and when you do that, your body can start doing what it needs to in the meantime, because it's instead of using 70% of its energy to digest the food, it's using like 10% of the energy to digest food. So now it's got all that extra percentages to do what it needs to do. It, it's not the food. It's how fast it eliminates. Uh, from the presence of carbohydrates. Now, this is, this is my theory. This is what I believe to be true. And again, none of us knows, none of us know the answer for sure. None of us, there's not a single answer for everyone either, right? We know for sure that the best diet for people, regardless of what your macronutrient breakdown is, is going to be local foods. You want to eat local foods. You don't want to eat New Zealand lamb. If yeah, you're I agree in, with that. Um, Idaho, right? We you agree. don't want to eat Costa Rica bananas if you're in Pennsylvania. <clears throat> you don't want to eat bananas if you're in London either. Like these is very simple principles that people want to follow. Eat local foods. Right. If it's just me, it's just me, your own. But if it's plants, eat local plants. And this is this is the real remedy. It's eating local organic foods. It's not basing your diet off of a particular macronutrient ratio. And my grand my great grandmother, she lived so long. And then the reason why I believe she lived so long is because, well, she grew up in New York and from a young age, they ate lots of sweets. Yeah, they, they ate breads, candies, um, not candies, but like breads um cakes cheesecakes all that stuff but what are they using for it right what are they using for bread they're using the yeast the organic everything is organic it's organic flowers organic it's, everything is organic and it's high quality mineralized soils that are providing the actual raw products whereas today you eat a loaf of bread you're getting folic acid which is going to completely poison you okay you're getting a bunch of added preservatives you're getting inorganic grain, which is known to be insanely toxic due to the high glyphosate content. You're really setting yourself up for failure. But I'd agree. I agree. I think these the, uh, bread especially is been that is spider down here is like the size of my car. What the where did this spider come from? But um, it just. Like, all right, so if you really like pasta, it has to come from Italy because they don't have the glyphosate issues that they they do here, especially if it's organic. I'm watching this spider the size of a car. Um, and but the 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 thing is, is if get organic wheat and make your own bread, it's four in four ingredients: water, yeast, salt, and and well, 
I kind of I kind of use five. I I use brown. I really like adding brown sugar, uh, yeast, salt, water, and flour. Five ingredients for mine. You can do it without the sugar. It's just not as good. And I don't even add a ton of sugar. It's like usually a one tablespoon. If you eat it back then, back when it was healthy for you, it's not going to mess it up because this is food that is just food. It's just from the earth. It's nature. It doesn't have any additives. It doesn't have any pesticides. Nowadays, when you take out all the plant foods and you just eat Costco or Walmart ground beef, you're eating a lower toxic load. But if you bring in back the organic sourdough, you bring back in um, whatever organic grains and oats and things that you like, potatoes, rice, whatever you like, that's local to you. You don't get sick from that. You actually improve your health because now your body isn't stressed out anymore. And again, just quickly back to my great grandmother. So she grew up eating all these high quality foods, tons and tons of meats. Uh, they ate lots of brains and thyroids and you know stuff around the bones. They were great cooks, livers, like all that stuff. And that's what she ate. That's like the quickest way to cause an autoimmune disease though. Because the body attacks it because it doesn't know the difference between the th thyroid that you just ate and your thyroid. So it starts building antibodies against the thyroid that you just ate from this animal. And then that those antibodies start attacking your own thyroid. And then all of a sudden you got Hashimoto's. So that's really not a good idea. Like I'm in Mexico right now, like we'll eat I don't even know where we start we'll to stop off at rice and potatoes every now and then, but it's mostly duck eggs and meats and raw dairy, like raw, raw chocolate milk sometimes. So my diet is, is very high quality foods. It's a good diet. And the raw, the milk thing. I mean, it's just, there's so much shit in milk. I don't know why anybody would do that, but it's not low carb by any means. I'm not eating low carb. And um, there's a trend right now in the health space. I don't know if you guys noticed this, but there's a very obvious trend right now. And the trend is that people are moving more towards a holistic lifestyle that mimics that of their great, great, great grandmother. It's not the carnivore diet that they think was done 20,000 years ago by warriors or whatever. The, I don't know what they think, any, whatever the fuck. It's not that. The diet, the thing that's going mainstream right now in the health space is mothers on farms and homesteads eating sourdough bread and raw butter on it. That's what's getting popular right now. It's the way that people used to live and eat. That's becoming mainstream. It's the carnivore Aurelius stuff. Even the Ray Pete ideas are starting to really gain traction. You know, yeah, but I mean, he's quoting, quoting uh, Ray Pete. Ray Pete, towards the end, like the last you know year, he said that you shouldn't be eating animals at all. So, <laughs> I mean, which which Ray Pete are you quoting? Like which year, which circa of of Ray Pete? Because the older he got, the more he. Uh, was like, no, nah, you shouldn't be eating animals. And if I ever went back to it, which I won't, I would, ne I would never go back to chicken. Chicken seems to be one of the worst things that you could do for yourself. I, I, you know, if you really look at how much more chicken is eaten now, and if you look at the French, the French used to take, they would, uh, they would reduce the fat. I think the thing's on my foot now. Uh, they reduced the fat from the chicken they would take it out throw it out and then they would put butter in there because they knew how toxic chicken was so they wouldn't the fat of from chicken and everything we we shouldn't be eating that stuff so if you're if you're watching this and you're like this this motherfucker's an idiot I'm not i'm not doing that right um or the the vegan thing you know like if it were me and i wasn't just in this vegan thing like I, I'm i'm in it but there's no way in hell that I would have pork or chicken in my, in my life. No way. People are starting to realize, hey, it's not sugar that's the problem. <laughs> like it's not, it's not putting a little bit of sugar in your coffee or um, a little bit of like sugar in your ice cream or something. That's the I mean, when I grew up, there was a bowl of sugar on everybody's table. No one was fat. Nobody. And they all still died. So, I mean, what, well, you know, what's the difference? Everybody died. So pick your poison. Problem. That's not it. It's the fact that these foods nowadays are so toxic that and it's just, trying just to bite further me. emphasizing the importance of eating organic. Guys, even I eat ice cream <clears> nowadays. I, I do eat ice cream. Like in the morning, maybe I'll have some chocolate. This video has almost got, become more entertaining for me for this, like the size of the, the car uh, spider that just tried to bite me. I'm paying rent here for this thing and it's biting me. Milk, some cheese, I'll have <clears> some tartare <throat> for lunch with some sourdough. For dinner, I'll have like a pork chop or a steak or something. 
and I'll have raw ice cream afterwards. Or not, I don't even think it's raw actually. Um, but it'll be like, it'll be cream, it'll be milk, it'll be some eggs, it'll be sugar, it'll be some chocolate, like cacao powder or whatever. And it's actually, I think that's healthy. Like I genuinely do. I think that's something that people could definitely benefit from eating, right? Because sugar still has nutrients in it. Sugar is still gonna help your body facilitate the production of hormones and uh, prevent it from going into gluconeogenesis where it's gonna start consuming its own tissues, that sort of thing. Um, that's another thing, this guy, yeah, exactly. Why are you going to the gym, having all your protein, and then your body's using all that protein and it's gonna use your muscles to break down, to uh, turn into carbohydrates, and, and like, why are you going to the gym, bro? Like, do you even lift? You know, it's ridiculous. So this is probably really shocking to a lot of you, this idea that you can actually consume sugar and still be healthy. Look at Mike Menser. That dude was ripped. He got cheated out of the 1980 Olympia. He would have won the 81 Olympia if he, had he not his little meltdown. And he ate 75% of his diet from carbohydrates. He talks about, he t I mean, he's dead now, but he talked about it all the time. When there was this whole idea that, no, the reason why we're sick is because of sugar, refined grains, seed oils. Seed oils and sugar are not in the same category. These so sugar and seed oils are not the same thing. They're very different. Seed, seed oil is death. That stuff has got to go. I think everybody agrees about that one. Oils are processed and refined and toxic. Sugar is not toxic. It's rancid before they even get to it. So it's like quadruple rancid by the time you get to it. And then you're, ugh, it, it, that's, that, that stuff's got to go. Sugar is a plant that's hardly processed and you can get unprocessed sugar, unrefined sugar as well that's organic. So um, th this, is, this is kind of the conclusion that I've come to. I'll do what I eat in a day videos if you guys want. And uh, I'm more than happy to do that and go over that stuff. But... I'm seeing a lot of people wake up, a lot of people start to incorporate plants back, kind of following Paul Saladino, who's right on a lot of things, but he also believes in evolution, which is ridiculous. But um, that's kind of, yeah, like I'll make more videos on this stuff if you guys want, but um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it makes sense. And um, let me know if you have any comments, questions, concerns, and uh, yeah. Man, I don't normally react to the entire video. This is, this is a new territory for me here, but I have to agree with him, and it's so crazy. It's, it's like polar opposite of where he was in that last video that I reacted when he uh, interviewed Durian Ryder. Now, I understand Durian Ryder's on like this huge extreme, and so was he at the time, so it was a good clash. And I, I don't think that anybody needs to go to any extreme to get healthier. But I do, uh, th this whole carnivore thing, I mean, it makes keto look healthy. It's, it's ridiculous. Uh, it's 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 absolutely ridiculous, and uh, the guy that 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 uh, got in the car accident at Harvard, um, after he exposed the fact that the the uh, the starvation study that was done that proved that if you the less you eat, the longer you live, and the healthier you're going to be, he proved that it wasn't actually anything to do with starving yourself. It was too much protein in these these animals' diets, and I think there was some human involved. That it wasn't the, it wasn't the starvation. It was the amount of protein in these people uh, in these people and animals' diets that was causing all of the aging. And once they removed the protein and went to high carb, and fat didn't really seem to affect anything all that much, according to this study. That it actually had the people were living uh, the animals were living longer. The people were living longer and healthier. It's not like these animals were healthy that were being starved. They were just living longer. But they weren't healthy at all. So anyway, take all of this for what you want to. I, I, I don't normally uh, react that much to a video. I cannot believe I added another 20 minutes to this video. But that's it. Any comments, questions down below? I'm sure the carnivore people will come on here. They pro they won't make it this far. They'll they'll get mad or whatever. And they'll, like I mean, some, some of the comments even on his video are like, ugh. Anyways. Like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Hello, and welcome back to the channel. Today, we have another carnivore. All right, so, no. I don't like that one either.